got me. So I'm going to share screen now and take you through some elements that we cover off in Aspire. So I've just pulling up this presentation. Here we are. So I'd like you to start thinking about, this is something we review in Aspire, is looking at your network being your net worth. And if your network is your net worth, have you thought about how much it is worth? So I'd like you to keep your mics open so we can have this more of as an interactive workshop. So I'd like to come to you, Beth, if your network is your net worth, how much is that network worth? Well, everything I do depends on the clients actually giving me business and passing my name to other people. For me, it's all about constantly staying in touch with them and finding an excuse to make contact over and over again to remind them I'm there. Because without the clients, I haven't got a business. Right. So if you were to put a value on it, what do you think that network is worth if it's your net worth? Hundred, no, probably into the millions. Right. In terms of potential business from the clients I've got at the moment, there is potentially, well, if you talk over the next 10 years, certainly a million. Wow. So it makes you realize that this network is worth quite a bit of money. And when you start thinking of it being quite a bit of money, you then start thinking about, okay, well, how am I managing that vast amount of money? So when it comes to you seeing it as your net worth, I know Beth, you're a really great example because you do all this stuff, yeah? But when you look at it as far as, in some ways you're babysitting almost like a million, for example, how you would then do these things is going to reflect the fact that you know it's worth that amount of money. Yeah. And it's all the systems you would put in place because you know, in some ways, you're protecting that amount of money. So I know that you do a lot of these things. So I'd like to come to you, Lara, because I can remember when we did this in Aspire, you went, wow, I didn't realize that. Yeah. So when it comes to your network and net worth, are you seeing those slotting together more now? And what would be your net worth of it? Yeah, I, I don't think I am seeing it slot into place now, but I think that's because of the times that we've been living in. Yeah. They've been, it, 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 um, if you think about when I, um, before before Aspire, for instance, when we were seeing people in person, I think you could then very much track, or oh, they've come for colour, they're yeah. coming for style, they're going to buy the makeup, um, and they're going to show, show five people. Well, if you think about the number of people I've actually seen in person since COVID started, is it, a, I think it's something like, six or eight do, do you know what I'm trying to say so yeah. so um that that hasn't happened yet however um it's really great to hear to, you know to hear the reminder because this is exactly it this is about the ripple effect about how many people you're yes. going to touch and you know even if I said that each one of my clients is then going to touch five more people and those five people then ripple out you know, best million then becomes two million, doesn't it? It depends on how you draw them in and how 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 you can accelerate that uh, uh, ripple effect, or how you can yes, accelerate, accentuate, make it bigger. Um, and and actually, I, I really like something that's come into my head here is about I really like the idea of you know taking one of these people and. Rip, rippling it out with five people that they know if I and I can I can take a client already in terms of um it, so as an example next week's guest on my podcast is a lady called Michelle who came for color because her friend Liz had been for color and brought her to my open day now Michelle is actually very very active in the Kettlewell Color Club and has got connections all around the globe and she's already put up in there I'm on Lara's podcast, da, 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 da. So if you think that there's already, say, 20 comments in that thread, and those that 20 people then listen to that podcast episode, if we track that back to 
Liz, who came to me, so there's me, Liz, does that make sense and how that ripples? So Liz to Michelle, Michelle now to them and how in the next five years that could ripple out all those ways. So in some respects, it's really hard to put a figure on it. You could probably put a figure on what you would like it to be and make that a plan and then reverse engineer it back. I don't know. But I'm... I, I suppose I'd like to challenge you, Laura. It's almost like to think like Beth, yeah? And if Beth is now working on 2022 yeah. and building her network now for 2022, and we're talking about being far more strategic, so it's like, well, what kind of things are you going to do to build that net worth of 2022 now? Well, that's what I feel I'm doing already yeah. by doing doing that. that. That's exactly that. It's, it's, it's getting this visibility. So, so now, between now and Christmas, it isn't necessarily about me getting bums on seats. It's actually about creating traction yeah. and visibility um, for that to pan out. Um, that, that's how I see that. And I, and I certainly need to do more, more blogs and things to up my authority on the subject to coincide. It's just finding the, finding the time to do it all, isn't it? You know, there's so many things that we know we should do, but it's about prioritizing them, which ones are going to be the most effective. And if you were to look at COVID, you know, and if we were to run through this in light of COVID, in some ways it was difficult to stay in touch because you almost like as though you didn't know what the narrative was going to be because you didn't know the what next. Yes, although I did take the decision, didn't I, to start that private Facebook group, my Sparkle and Shine group, which obviously they paid for at the time, which helped me pay for all my Zoom memberships, which is now free to my clients. And I think there's 70 members in there now who are are my clients they're people who have who have been to me or spoken to me about about color I think the only person who hasn't been to me for color in there is Philippa who was on a spy with me um but, but other than that everybody so I think that it, it was about you because if I had lost that contact if I think about the loyalty I gained from that even that core of about 20 people who were there for me during covid that loyalty is now paying off, isn't it? You look at yeah. Michelle doing that episode and because she was one of them. Um, and, and they've already been back. You know, Liz has already been back for a colour refresh. And, and in fact, Sue, another lady, had a message the other day saying, oh, such and such a friend wants to come for colour. Um, she's a little bit nervous. And you see, what I do is I then say, not a problem, Sue. Why don't you come with her? Now, a lot of people wouldn't offer that, but Sue's done that before with two other clients and she's come to watch. She loves it. She then feels really valued. Um, she's having a nice day out as well, especially if they stay for lunch. She thinks that's absolutely wonderful. Boom, win, win. She's coming back again. So she's a fine example of that ripple. And so apart from the Facebook group, how did you stay in touch with your clients? Um, I my newsletters I am not very good at doing newsletters but when I do do one because I hate all the writing I do a video because that suits my style um, I do then do a little bit of writing underneath but um, I think the connection with me speaking to people works well um, that that that's my main my main my main way uh, I suppose for me I'm really good at connecting my contacts so say for example I've got a contact I want to introduce to Beth because I know the strategic approach she wants to make in networking. And I know this person works really strategically when it comes to networking and opens doors of gatekeepers. And I really want to connect Beth in there because I know there's a potential new market. But it's one of those where it's only recently I've been able to sit down with Beth. So it goes back to this face-to-face stuff that we've missed so much as soon as we start sitting down face to face we can start opening up those contacts and you know I was asking Beth you know how can I help and really I'm sharing resources with her because this person I wouldn't say is a client of mine she was a client of mine 20 odd years ago and we still support one another but it is very much sharing that person as a resource and um, and I know, Beth, you do a lot of uh, sharing of resources amongst your clients. So can you describe that for us? Well, I have a lot of free tools that I share with my clients, but I'm very good at also connecting them with each other because they all work in different fields, come from different spheres of life. 
Um, so I am pretty good at hooking them up and giving the referrals between my clients as well, especially because quite a few of my clients are life coaches. <coughs> I've got a lot of life coaches. The more I think about it, a lot of them are life coaches. And so quite often I'll come across somebody when I do their fact find with their money, they'll say, well, I don't really know what I want. I don't really know what my goals are. So I can refer them to one of these life coaches. There's a few I can choose from. They're all completely different people. So they suit different types of personality. Um, so I can refer them on and put them in touch, which can help them, which then helps me because they can come back and go, I know what I'm doing in my life now. I know what I want to do with my money. So it, it all comes back in the end. Or I've got somebody who said, um, oh, we've really got to do work on the house next year, but we just can't find a builder. I've got a client who's a builder who said he'd had a cancellation. So I've sorted that out. So sort of trying to use my influence to put people in touch with each other, not really for my benefit, but it does sort of mean people will remember me in a, in a fond way, I'd like to think. So how many people have you got in your network? Actual clients has got to be 150 to 200. But if you then think they've got family members who they're talking to constantly, all the people I've met through networking who aren't necessarily clients, but who've referred to me, 350 maybe in all. And how do you hold all those names? Are they, obviously, I know you use it almost like a paper system and Excel spreadsheets, but how do you keep 350 people in your mind to know that you can stay in constant contact, co contact with them? It is all my Excel spreadsheet and weekly I review it and look at what's going on with everybody and think about, as I read through it, as I come across each name, I think, oh, they posted that on LinkedIn. Oh, hang on a minute. They wanted this. Do I know anybody? Look through, find somebody who can help them. Um, I don't have a system with my clients of gold, silver, bronze, and they all get treated differently. A lot of advisors do. Uh, I treat everybody exactly the same. They're all gold to me. Um, so I try and stay in equal amount of contact with everybody. I don't only contact people when it's time to their annual review or if it's the end of the packed year. I, I try and check in at least three or four times a year just to give them a ring and say, how are you? How are things going? Especially during the pandemic, I thought a lot of people were lonely and stuck at home. I've got a lot of um, widows, elderly widows in my client bank who weren't seeing anybody. They appreciated a phone call and it doesn't take very long. And it took me a long time to get used to the phone because I was very phone phobic when I started this job. I wanted to email everybody all the time. But people do really appreciate a phone call. It doesn't take very long. So a five minute phone call on a Friday afternoon. I try and set aside two hours on a Friday afternoon and ring different people just to see how they are. Or if I've seen something in the news that's relevant to them or something's come through in the financial industry that I think is relevant to them. I'll just pick it up the phone and say, just so you know, this is going on. Do you want some more information? And I just try and have a lot of touch points with people. But it, it is a juggle. It's a very much a juggle. So what advice could you offer Lara? Because Lara, you know, like myself, you know, is forever juggling time. How do you manage the time of doing all this reviewing, connecting and picking up the phone? I don't sleep very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do set aside blocks of time for things. So if you look at my diary, it's colour coded. So I have green appointments. Um, my PA knows how many of those I'm willing to do a week, but she also knows there's blocks of time. So there's half an hour a week that is entirely for business planning, where I go back over my business plan. I think, oh, I said I'd do that and I haven't. And it spurs me on to do it. I have two hours on a Friday afternoon, which is my phoning people time. Um, it's just dedicating time to it because it's very easy to put it off. But if I've put in my diary, this is what I'm doing in this period of time, I will stick to it. And of course, you know, we've got this whole thing of updating social media sites. And I don't know how people are faring with Facebook at the moment, because Facebook, for example, was in meltdown last night. So where are people at with Facebook and keeping, do they, are they using Facebook as much as they used to? So I'll come to you, Su to Su Suzanne, for this, you know, how are you using Facebook? Is it, is it working for you still? Um, yes, I would say Facebook's been really good for me. Um, but also I've had, I'm getting more emails from people who want to connect by email, which has been very surprising. Um, but definitely Facebook is um, a good medium. And I, I didn't realize that you, to keep people seeing your posts, all you've got to do is go on to somebody that um, 
you want to connect with that you haven't spoken to for, well, sometimes three years, and you just like something on their post, they then start seeing what you've put on. They, they then start seeing your posts. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it has really worked because there was somebody I wanted to connect with that I hadn't actually seen for eight years. And so I did that. And from that connection, I've actually got work and I've right. got some free courses I can go on. And it's, I mean, it's, he's just brought a new, a new book out. Um, but it was, I also then was able to connect with quite a few other people who saw my name. Oh God, I haven't seen you for eight years. What's happened? So, and they're all down in London, which is a totally different I used to connect with London North a lot, but so there's a whole circle of people have come back in and that's all through Facebook. Right. Um, but they're also asking me, oh, do you know where I can get this? Is there anywhere? Because people are outsourcing now, whereas they used to go local for yeah. things. Like you said, lots of prices have gone up. People who are working in London will travel to get the right person. Mm -hmm rather than be in London, because so many people who are working in London aren't. So yeah, I think Facebook can, can be still as long as, uh, when, when it all went down yesterday, it affected so many people I know um, who, who do their business, who do um, uh, their advertising, and, and also with WhatsApp, they do groups of things and they, they connect with the groups. So I think it taught a lot of people not to have everything just in one basket. Yeah, yeah. You know, so lots of people, things were put off because of that's the only uh, medium they use. Thank you, Suzanne. I'm going to take everyone into a stakeholder analysis now. I don't know if you've ever done a stakeholder analysis, but you need to know what you're selling to do a stakeholder analysis. Has anyone done a stakeholder analysis? No? Okay, so it's a bit, bit like brainstorming. Just put the word in the middle of a piece of A4 and then start thinking about who your stakeholders are. And it's so important you know what it is that you're selling and you can't mix your, and your uh, models. So if you just get hold of a bit of A4, I'm gonna get a bit of A4 here and put in the middle, you know, it's as simple as doing a one of those, yeah? Well, you put in the middle what it is that you're doing. So say, for example, for me, I'm gonna pop in there mentoring. Yes, yeah? so I've popped in the mentoring. And then I've got to think of all those people that are part of my stakeholder analysis that relate to mentoring and obviously you can do this for all your different services so I'd like you to tell me who you think my stakeholders are within mentoring who is it that impacts on people who need mentoring are you talking about Sorry, I, I don't think I quite understand what it is you want us to think about uh, for you. You want us to think about the people who you can go, who, when you say stakeholders. Who, who are, are who's to, a stakeholder so, who, as far as just, mentoring? Can so you say for, define what you mean by stakeholder? Okay. So say, say, for example, there is a person that needs business mentoring. Who else is out there that's part of that analysis of that um person that is has a stakeholding in their life and it could be my life so who's got a stake you mean you mean like success? counselors coaches yeah financial advisor yeah. um uh professional body membership that type of thing you mean yeah but who's going to be the closest to me as opposed to the closest to them so who's going to be my stakeholders in me delivering this service as in a professional body? It could be professional body. Well, that would be the ILM. So, so yeah, so mentoring, ILM, am I using them? No, I'm not. Yeah, am I using my membership with them? No, I'm not. Am I using all the publicity that I could be involved with with ILM? No, I'm not. So can you see where there are huge gaps 
in the kind of stakeholders I should be working with in my business. And you will have the same happening in your business. Yeah. So say, for example, if if you were to pick your who you're going to put in the middle, what would yours be, Lara? Um, I do colour and style. <clears throat> colour and style. So if you've got a bit of paper and you put colour and style in there, who are the stakeholders around you that, that you would put on your model that is part of your analysis? Who, who should be there? My clients. Like so you've got clients. existing clients, yeah? So the pop people. down on yours, existing clients. So I'd like everyone to have a go of their own. So say, for example, for me now, mentoring, I belong to professional bodies. Am I using my professional bodies? No, I'm not. Coming out of COVID, have I used them throughout COVID? No, I haven't. So I belong to the Chartered Institute of Personnel Development. Am I using it? No, I'm not. But I still have my membership. So I'm a membership of the CIPD. So when it comes to you, Laura, who are the professional bodies around you? that are part of your stakeholders? Uh, my P PSA, Professional Speakers Association. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm ILM. ILM. Um, I don't think I'm part of any other professional body. No, I'm not part of any other professional body for that. Okay. No. So for me, mentoring, it would be banks. Yeah. I should be working more closely with the banks. But that's not a, you call that a professional body. So I, I thought you meant like. um They're a part of the stakeholder. They're a stakeholder connected right. with my business. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I, I could then say solicitors then, because I've worked with some solicitors firms about personal branding and presentation yeah. for their staff. Right. Yeah. And who else, for example, when it comes to personal styling, is out there that's a stakeholder that you've never worked with before. So I'm thinking clothes shops mm. in your area. Is there, a, is there a certain brand of clothing you should be allied to? Well, I'm I'm upping that game on that one because obviously, as you know, I'm aligned to Kettlewell. Um, but, uh, you know, I've asked Melissa twice to come and be a guest on the podcast and uh, <laughs> that ain't happening. But I did go and visit, um, there's a... Um, are you all right, Richard? Yeah, all right, the keys. Sorry, don't know. Um, I um I follow. I've I've been aware that there is this very small company in um just that side of Stroud, so Gloucestershire, not that far away, that um has been on Instagram and they make beautiful silk jackets. Oh yes, and sorry, did you see that. I've, uh, no, I didn't see it online. I know who you mean. They are fantastic Shimbui. all over in Instagram. Shimbui, yes. And oh. they've made, they, Princess Anne frequents them and her, her right. ascot outfits. Well, I have been up there myself last week and um, uh, was after, I, I am going to a wedding and I would have liked one of their, their long coats, but obviously got to chatting to their lovely Michelle who does all their social media. And obviously I then tagged them in and I've offered to go and speak for them because obviously she, I managed to weave into, because that's networking. I was buying a jacket, but it was networking. And what I'm very conscious of is that as I elevate my brand, Yes, Kettlewell is perfect for basics, but, you know, they've clearly got a different agenda and and I clearly don't have enough thousand followers for them to to sort of mention me, if that makes sense. So actually, I need to look at the more expensive brands, yeah. but independents like myself. So actually, I'm hoping that that's going to be a relationship that's nurtured. And um, I obviously asked, you know, do people come in with their color wallets, you know, and all of that? And she said, oh, yes. And they get they don't really know. You know, they say, oh, I can't have that because of that. And I said, oh, I get so frustrated with that. They don't realize they've got millions of colors. It's not just 36. It's all the different shades. I said, oh, I'm more than happy to come and do a talk. You know, we're going to have a little evening together, you know. And she was well up for that. So I'm going to nurture that, you know. And, and yes, I bought a jacket, but I love the jacket. And yes, I'm, I'm probably 
looking to buy a very long coat. So, but in, and there's money outlay on that, but it's for my benefit. But can you see where I'm going with that? Mm. That to me, but that is, person is a stakeholder, isn't it? Exactly. They've got a stakeholder in you, and and you could be a stakeholder in their business. So going back to mentoring. It was only when Beth and I sat down, we realized we're both working with clients in a similar way, looking at their long term goals. Yeah. So it was me realizing, OK, Beth is part of my uh, stakeholders. Well, She's I would in- have thought that all of us on a Wednesday night are part of your stakeholder are stakeholders for you. Are we not? You are. But am I seeing that? Are you seeing that we are all connected? Yes, because I've invited you on my yeah. podcast. <laughs> yeah. But it's working strategically with people. Sometimes for familiarity breeds content because we just take it for granted that each other, we know what each other does, but we're not actually sitting down and saying, well, that particular part of what you do with clients. So say, for example, Beth works with clients looking at their long-term goals, and so do I. And we work in very similar ways. And I've said, you know, unit two of Aspire, where people can design their own, how they run their own business and driven by values, is so similar to what you're doing, Beth. And so we've realized we're, we're, we're so closely aligned that we didn't know. So now I firmly see Beth as a stakeholder in the people that I'm mentoring, because when I've mentored somebody, they're ripe to speak to somebody like Beth, because they know what their goals are, and they're good to go. And it's really interesting, because Beth said, you know, her clients are mentors, you know, a lot of her clients are mentors, probably because they're asking their clients what their goals are, and they're closer to making that decision of working with Beth, yeah? So for me as well, so when it comes to probably the enterprise agencies, I should be working a lot more closely with. And when it comes to mentoring, you know, you know, I know I am woman isn't part of this, but bearing in mind, you know, I should have stayed probably closer to my venues, even though we were in COVID, because in some ways they're no longer a stakeholder and I'm no longer a state. It's almost like as though that's been cut. Yeah. So I've got to start from scratch, building up my reputation and my relationships with venues. So really I should have venues on here, but there can be so many things involved in my stakeholder analysis of the kind of people I should be working closer with. So say, for example, you know, because I'm mentoring, it would be, okay, what networks are supporting people who are really out there looking for networking, even down to things like, you know, the lady who's brought out the pro planner, Yes, we were talking about being, you know, stakeholders in one another's businesses, but that's gone by the by again with COVID. So even something like planning tools. And so when it comes to Karen, you know, I'm forever sending my ladies across to Karen Brown. She is a stakeholder in my business and I'm a stakeholder in hers. So I'd like you to start thinking about who are the stakeholders you should be working more closely with. And how close are you really? So say, for example, looking at Suzanne, we haven't focused a lot on Suzanne's business, but looking at Suzanne's business, if she had in the center of her circle, um, coaching, life coaching, then we can immediately start throwing stakeholders at Suzanne, like it could even be dentists, doctors, all sorts of people that surround that niche of people that uh, require Suzanne services. So what would you put in the center of yours, Suzanne? What would you be looking to develop your stakeholder analysis on? What service would you look at? At the moment, the main service I'm doing is hypnotherapy and coaching alongside it. Right. So if that's in the middle. And that's through COVID. It's totally changed because of people's circumstances have changed and the age group has dropped considerably. Um, For one section, it is from 13 to 21. And then I miss out the whole of the middle and then come 
45.50 onwards. Right. And the middle bit, which was my main um, part, vanished in COVID. Right. So who are the stakeholders? So let me be, um, let me use an example. So say, for example, Rachel Bedgood does CRB checking yeah. for anyone and everyone. But she realized quite quickly that she couldn't get to all the people she needed to get to. She needed to get to gatekeepers of people. Yeah, she's oh, she works on a staff of 14 people and her turnover is 9 million. She doesn't have a marketing department. She builds relationships with people very much like Beth. And she builds relationships with gatekeepers of a lot of people. So it would be the person, for example, heading up the Welsh Sports Association who looks after all the people needing CRB checks connected with sport in Wales. Can you see where this is going? So yeah. she contacts one person that is a, a stakeholder in her business that she knows needs her services for a lot of people. Yeah. Mm. So when it comes to somebody like yourself, Suzanne, I'm guessing the people who are gatekeepers would be doctors, therapists themselves, health centers, anyone who's got a stake in that same yeah. classification of clients. So who would be the stakeholders you would have around you that in effect would be gatekeepers? At the moment, I'm getting work through um, the hypnotherapy body that I'm, I'm with. Um, and when I was away in Ireland, <laughs> I got several recommendations from them, for, and that was for hypnosis. Um, and from the carers locally, I've had quite a few referrals from the carers, and that's from people who are, um, have anxiety and stress. So the carers, I should perhaps be going to who's employing the carers rather than the carers yeah. themselves. That's right. But they talk amongst themselves, which has been bringing me work in. Mm -hmm. So say, for example, have you contacted your local dentists? We don't have any. <laughs> so, no. Our local dentist, who uh, I, I was there today, um, is um, nearly an hour's drive away. Okay. So people aren't prepared to come. But before COVID, when I, when I lived in Wiltshire, I used to get work from the dentist, and that was for people with anxiety for um, going to dentists. Um, and I do occasionally get people that I, I work with over the phone and I give okay. them hypnosis for that, but not locally. So that's not okay. feasible. So, so again, doctors, health centres, <coughs> these are all people who are gatekeepers of a lot of people. Um, I do get work. I, I used to work with um, a doctor's practice in Wiltshire and okay. used to work with them. <clears throat> but here I haven't... I haven't done that here for some reason. I okay. didn't want, because they insist on doing CBT. Right, okay. And I don't like doing that okay. because so, I find it's not so good. <laughs> who's in your stakeholders then? Who, who's out there on your, the edge of, you know, around your central service? Who's um, part of your stakeholders? I get work from the hub in Newtown, which is, um, oh God, what's it? Wales, I've forgotten what it's called now. They run all of the courses. I've been on courses with them. They are called the Wales Networking Hub or something, aren't oh, they? That, I thought, so? but I couldn't think there must be something else. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, I, I, I got work. I worked with one of the girls, and she then got gave me work. So, so yes, and when I think of how many people they have going through the doors. In fact, this, they did an interview with me a few weeks ago and they want to put, put it live to advertise me. So, but then I went on holiday, so that hasn't come about yet. But yes, I have had an interview with them. So um, I'd like you to start thinking more about who's yeah. in the stakeholders. 
because going back to what Lara said, you know, one person can have a ripple effect to at least five people. So say, for example, I've put around my hub banks. Well, say, for example, I could go in and speak to the local bank manager who has clients, but that bank manager is obviously connected to a bank that might want to know a lot more about um, women in business. They will have staff. They might want to update their skills. So there's a training opportunity. There's a speaking opportunity. There's um, probably a promotional opportunity because they will promote whatever I do, perhaps on their intranet, and as well as them referring me out to their clients. So there's lots of opportunities just within banks. So say, for example, HSBC had days where they pull in all their clients in order to network. Again, there's that opportunity. So there's an opportunity for me to network, but also sell to their clients via that network. Yeah. yeah? The, the other thing I was going to say, just before COVID, well, in the years before COVID, the local um, places like Tesco's in Wiltshire, as well as in Wales, you can, um, uh, you don't pay for it, but they allow you to be the front of house and you can advertise your goods and everything and you give a yeah. donation to charity. Yeah. Um, and quite a few of my friends have done that. Um, sometimes you see charities doing it. The likes of Lara, she would do a bomb there. <laughs> might not be the clientele it's not you know i'm saying asda and tesco's but there are other stores um that allow you to do that and there are it's not not just um the people that are going through it's the people they know as well and say oh i saw this today so in your hub you might have a stakeholder that somebody else might like Mm. And again, if there are five opportunities, you wouldn't be just passing them one opportunity. You could be passing them five opportunities. So I'm going to come to Beth now. Who have you discovered is part of your stakeholders? They're almost these gatekeepers to more people, but they are connected with you somehow. The one I'm not using is accountants. Right. Um, partly because... Most financial advisors and accounts have already pretty much paid up. Um, so that is quite a, it's quite a common link that I've sort of steered away from because I think most people have already sort of covered that area. But I haven't really looked at care organisations because I was thinking a lot of my clients, they're reaching points in their lives where they are making decisions and going into care homes is one of them. Never tried reaching out to any of the charities that help people that need care. Um, Solicitors are notorious for taking referrals and not giving them back. So there's a reason I haven't exploited that one. They're known for it. Suzanne, I was just thinking, our local gym and leisure centres let people do that in their lobbies as well. Oh, yeah, there's lots of places. I know that the chiropractic, that um, where I used to uh, rent a room from, he, um, he did a few um, and the business he got was phenomenal. I mean, I'm not just talking because of what he did and how much it cost to, to go to them. You signed up for, um, for, say, a year. So each client was paying about £1,800. And they would, you know, put the board up and advertise it all and have a bit of practice on somebody. And they were the business they were bringing in was phenomenal. They did at the gym at the um oh that big gym in um uh in just outside of swindon lara i can't remember what's called something it's a oh, guy's name i've got david it. lloyd that's it david lloyd he did one up at david lloyd and the business he made last that in one night was something like about thirty thousand pounds wow yeah so so there are places and thank you I forgot about that Beth. <laughs> so coming back to you Beth are there any stakeholders that any of us can be introducing you to what are the stakeholders you haven't made access to if anybody has any links to any 
charities or organizations that help the elderly when they're needing care. Um, that's an area where I really could help their clients out. Um, and if you know any accountants who look for a financial advisor to refer their clients to, that'd be good. But most accountants do already have somebody. Um, estate agents are sort of obvious, but I hate mortgages and I've made the decision in 2022 I am not doing mortgages. They're far too fiddly for the amount of money they pay. So I, I've done sort of a, a cost benefit analysis and thought for the amount of time they take and the amount of stress they cause, I don't want to do them. I'd rather have the free time. Um, so estate agents would have been obvious if I was still going to do that. Um, and I've already got three will writers I work with. They're very different personalities. And depending on the client I work out, which of them I would refer to which will writer. I've got one very um, outspoken valleys guy who is not suitable for some of my more delicate ladies. Uh, I've got a female will writer who I recommend for those. Um, so sort of covered that base. Existing clients, I don't leverage my existing clients enough about their family members and their friends. And that's gotta be a big part of what I do next year. And so I suppose when people are coming to you, the first thing you start with them in some ways is to shift them from confusion to clarity. Yeah. And confusion to clarity about the kind of life they want in the future. So you can see how a ment business mentor works well with Beth. But also you must be seeing a, a range of clients that you know are Lara's audience and also are Suzanne's audience. So I suppose I'm very, I... very good at promoting Lara. It has to be said, you must give me some business cards. I tend to send them your um, profile on LinkedIn because a lot of people, but whenever anybody compliments me on what I'm wearing, I point out that you've chosen my colors for me. Um, I, I, I'll be honest, I don't think I understand enough about what Suzanne does to know who I would send to you, Suzanne. But can we stay with you and Lara? As far as Lara, do you see Beth as a stakeholder in your business? Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm I want her a bit for Lara. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I, I want her story on the podcast. I want it then written up in a blog. It is all of those things. Because actually, you saying that, Beth, what, ha what better way rather than the LinkedIn is for you to say, why don't you listen to my recording I made with Lara on her podcast? Yeah. Uh, ka -ching. Um, but but more than that, Beth has already introduced me um, to someone with the potential of me coming to Wales to speak, haven't you? Um, yeah. So that that's a huge potential. Uh, okay. So spinner. how can that be formalized? You know, how can, for example, Beth have some sort of reward for that and vice versa? Is there a way that can happen or is it just going to hang loose? I'm not allowed to take rewards. I'm not allowed to take any income. Okay. To the FCA for anything like this, but I'm more than happy to promote Lara because she genuinely helped me. I believe in what she does. So telling people about her, I'm more than happy to do it. Okay. I, I so, see the value of it. And, uh, and, Lara, I, and how I, can you pay back then as far as, I know you can't take money, but can you take uh, vouchers for restaurants or? But what, what I'd like to think that I, I do, because obviously, you know, Beth is not the first person. I've built my business up through this word of mouth recommendation. And I very much like to think that, um, and obviously we, we've had we've had COVID. So as we move out of COVID, but before that, I used to have numerous open days where I would provide lunch, I would provide tea, coffee and cake. And those ladies would come and they'd have a day out with so much pleasure. So I believe that that is one way that I give back. Um, they know that they can send me a message and a picture. Lara, what do you think of this? Is this right for me? Other people would charge for that. Yeah. I, I don't. I take it as give and take. So I think there's an element of that. But yes, if there was something absolutely massive, then I, you, you know, I, I'm going to be I'm going to be saying, oh, you know, let, let's go out and have afternoon tea. Do you know what I mean? But I don't. Um, I'm I'm quite reluctant because we've talked about this with affiliates. I'm actually really reluctant to formalize anything like that because that's not how I've built my business. I've built my business up very successfully by not paying people. It's built on trust. It's built on give and take. It's built upon I'm there if they need them and, and they know that I will refer them or I'll I'll pick them up from a doctor's appointment or do you know what I mean? It, it's built up like that. I can't I can't almost put it into words, but I 
And obviously, I appreciate you'd need to ask all, all the other people whether they feel they get that back from me. But I'd like to think that they do. Does that make sense? I don't yeah. know. No one's ever asked me to formalise it like that. No one's ever. But I'm the first to say things like, oh, um, I think I think when Liz came with Michelle and then a few, I think, you know, when she came and bought some makeup, I then popped an extra lipstick in or I'll or I'll, I'll you know, knock something off. I, I, I kind of feel that I do that intuitively. Right. But maybe that's not enough. I, I don't know, Beth. It, 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 I, I, I don't know. Do people want Sarah's something? Sarah's done quite a lot to promote me among her daughters and their friends as well. Actually, so yes, so it is reciprocal. Yeah. Yes. I forgot and that. Yes. Sarah's daughter is now one of my clients. Yes. Yes, there I forgot you that. And you did, you did the talk with Verity as well. Yes. 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 So you've had an opportunity oh, to and build Ellie. Have, you, have you got Ellie? Has Ellie been your client now? I've done a fact find with her. Um, yes. I'm information. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. And if you get that, and that will come and Lucinda will follow. So they're the ones that are getting married. It's Lucinda, actually, that's getting married on the 4th, who I was talking about the outfit for. Brilliant. So can you see, Sherry, it is yeah. reciprocated, yeah. Yeah. And but it, it doesn't is matter. A but Sorry, for example, if somebody new comes along who is into affiliate marketing, so say, for example, Yvonne, who joined us last week, has caught on with the affiliate marketing now. And so that when she went on the Pro Planner what, you know, she came with us first to talk about affiliate marketing. And when she was on the pro planner workshop, what, as soon as they mentioned affiliate marketing and that she could have X amount to promote pro planner to other people, you know, she's hot on it. Uh, she hasn't had that opportunity to, to know, like, and trust you. And that might take time, but she is a gatekeeper to a lot of women who are concerned with their body shape, and style and so it would be a matter of how quickly could you build that relationship and could you offer for example an affiliate income to in order to in some ways I don't like the word coerce but, but I don't, I don't <laughs> want a form to of do, coercion isn't but it really? I don't want to do that Cheryl I abs I don't want to do that because that's not my business values to me um, I, I want what you're saying from her, but I would rather that comes from me having coffee with her and her getting to know me and trusting me. I don't want anybody recommending me unless they've tried me, used me, love it. I, I don't want I don't want them to because I, I wouldn't recommend anybody I haven't worked with or tried and tested them. If that so makes already sense. You, you, you have a onboarding of stakeholders without realizing it yeah you've got an onboarding policy really yes of I how do. you bring in stakeholders I absolutely and it's great do. it doesn't there's no right and there's no wrong it's just knowing what touches yeah. your heart yeah. and how you want to do it yeah 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 no and and I I'm very very clear about that and like and like the podcast as well I invite people I've had a couple of people now approach me on LinkedIn um uh, oh can I be a, a guest on your podcast da, da, da. and so I write back and say oh so which episode interested you the most da, 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 da. and then you don't hear from them and I'm thinking yeah I'm not just having anybody yeah. ca come come on and then and I remember doing that at the very beginning and there was um I think it's Jason Archdale who's on quite a high profile on Facebook. And I said to him, you, you listen to my trailer, listen to my first episode, and then we'll talk about what resonates with you. Nothing back at all. Well, they're not the right people I want to be aligned with. So I'm very, this is, but you see, this for me is all about personal branding. So this yeah. is why I have caution about affiliates. Yeah, I don't mind you guys as being affiliates, but I don't want, I, I don't want any old I don't want to work with any old Tom Dick and Harry I'm, I'm sorry I, my time alive, I'm, I'm a bit fussy now but you are being strategic in that that is yes strategy. I am mm. yeah so knowing what that strategy looks like and wo working it across your network yes know mine how is not you're going to bring it in yes mine's not a I you know small value loads of numbers is it mine's a higher value smaller numbers and so perhaps then when it comes to Yvonne you now I know what your stakeholder strategy is I can say to Yvonne you need to have coffee with Lara you yeah. and Lara will get on really well but it's yeah. more about building the relationship absolutely and that's important to me because that's another reason why I I'm in 
business and I do what I do because actually I love the meeting people. That is a yeah. huge part. It's not all money driven for me yeah. at all. Far from it. Far from yeah. it. So you know what your stakeholder strategy yeah, is. I'm, I'm really, really clear on that. In fact, if anything, COVID has helped me see how clear I am on that. Okay. So I'm going to come to you, Beth. Now, looking at your strategy to work with your stakeholders, what will that look like? This is where I'm still in my early days of next year's strategy. <laughs> I need to get in touch with some new areas of people. So I think now I've identified the care sector, I need to start looking within my network who already has contacts, contacts in that area. So I'm not starting with cold leads, who can introduce me to people in that area. So that's a case of sitting down and going through my, my wonderful spreadsheet and see who I know that maybe they already have family that's in a care home. Maybe I know because of work I've done with them, they've had care issues in the past and will know people in that area. Actually, I think it's three straight away, people I've met this week. Um, so then that's got to be something. The week after next, I have set aside as no meetings, just strategy. So that's what I will do. I will set time aside and go back over. Once I've identified the areas, go back to the people I already know and see who they know in those areas. I suppose I would challenge you on that. I would say that where I would see there's an opportunity would be the carers. So linking in with carers who are looking after the needs of blah, 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 because they probably will be the ones who would be looking after that individual. Yeah. So perhaps there's a carers group on Facebook, for example. Perhaps there's a carers a group on LinkedIn. Who's just joined a carers group because her husband's just been diagnosed with dementia. So she has just officially become a carer and joined a group. Right. So that's the sort of person I need to identify. Yeah. Beth, can I just ask, are you still wanting, because obviously the, about sort of six months ago, you wanted to work with the, the young ones. Oh, yes, um, I desperately want to work with young right. women. <laughs> okay, that, that's good, because because I do see that for you. If you think about Louisa now, and when she's, she's obviously, I think she's got some stocks and shares with you now, hasn't yeah. she? Yes. Um, and, and, and I can see that, you know, that ripple effect, those five people, her now five people, so she's coming into final year of uni and all of that. And, and, and Ellie, because Ellie, Ellie is the sort of late 20s to 30s yeah. category, which is actually what you really want. And yeah, I, I can see that that will, will, will work. Don't worry, we've got a wedding coming up. I'll be able to drop a few more cars. I'll be, I'll be seeing all of that year group who I taught when they were five and they're now 30. <laughs> <laughs> they're all going to be at this wedding. <laughs> so going back to this ripple effect of the potential of five people, from one referral it is then understanding well you know it's little things that you've said this evening Lara sometimes we even forget to ask for a testimonial mm -hmm. yeah sometimes we need those opportunities to sit down eyeball to eyeball with somebody and say who do you know who could you recommend me to and then having a process for managing that referral pro process and being clear about almost like okay well how will I how will you pay back one another? How can you create this win-win between you? So it isn't all the, who can you recommend me to, but how can I help you? And to keep that referral flow, flow going. But it's being very clear that you are providing a service of something. You're solving a problem that somebody has. And within that solving the problem, who else is involved in that chain of that purpose, that person's problem being solved? Just like Beth and I found, there's a certain technique that she uses when she sits down with her clients. And it's very similar to a mentoring experience. Therefore, I see I'm part of Beth's stakeholder chain and she's part of my stakeholder chain. And we hadn't actually pinned that down before. And we've still got to work out a process of what happens because when people go through Aspire, when they start designing the picture of the life they want, there is an opportunity then for a financial coach to jump in and help make the finances a reality. So I can see that we're solving a similar problem together and there's an opportunity to bring Beth into the thread of that. We, we're 
we, it's 1912 at the moment. So I'd like to pull this together and to uh, look at almost like what have you learned from this discussion can workshop. What have you learned and what are some of the things you're going to put into action differently or perhaps develop a system around? So I'll come to you first, Beth. What have you picked up from this evening that you'll put into action and start working with? Well, I've got two clear groups of stakeholders I need to go after, haven't I? So that's <laughs> quite a solid thing for me to follow up on, really. And who is the two groups? The accountants and carers slash care organisations. Right. So if anyone can help us with that, then obviously uh, we could do that off piste, as it were. Um, is there anything that you feel, Beth, we can you be helping you more with, whether to expand your network or just some key introductions you need? Anybody you come across who you think I can help, please feel free to give them my details or introduce us or put us in touch with each other. Um, I'm very keen next year now to work with new people because um, although I've got a really good client base, I've pretty much spent the last couple of years getting them in order. So for next year, I need new clients. The client bank I've got are fantastic and I will continue to look after them. But in terms of new business, I need new clients. Right, lovely. Okay, so we've got to keep those introductions flowing. So coming to you, Suzanne, what have you picked up this evening and what would you put into action? I've actually picked up quite a lot this evening. <laughs> um, apart from the fact I'm overheating because it was cold <laughs> and my husband's put the heating on. Anyway, um, yeah, it's, it's finding out there's two areas that I'm, I'm going to look into that um, I've let slip um, to find more clients. So it's, it's reaching out to people I've already dealt with in the past in different areas. Um, like you said, doctors and things, I need to start. Um, and I just realised also nurses, um, because I, I know an awful lot of nurses. And so I can tap into that for uh, clients as well. And even things like, you know, people who need hypnosis might have a fear of flying. So that's yeah. even travel agents. Oh, oh, a lot of the travel agents are still online. <laughs> but, but having said that, I do the work online anyway. But yeah, a lot of phobias have come up because of uh, the fact that uh, spiders, people have never had a spider phobia or were able to contain it. There's apparently, well, I know our house is full of spiders, but an awful lot of people are scared of spiders again. Right. So, so you're going to be yeah. busy, Suzanne. You're going to be busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And who do you feel we could introduce you to? Um, if anybody has anxiety or if they've got, um, well, anything that hypnosis can help with, because it is a passion of mine that it doesn't matter what you do in life. I mean, I've been doing hypnosis since 1990, so it is something I absolutely love and I'm fascinated by. So there's, I use it even when I'm doing coaching. So because there's always a blockage and I just find it's a quick fix for lots of people. Have you spoken to Yvonne about hypnosis in particular as far as weight loss? Um, no, but that's part of what Hugh and I are doing in, he's a hypnosis, uh, hypnotherapist as well. And we're putting together a, a scheme in January. So it's a, I'd half written a course and he had, so we've got um, six months and each of them will get uh, uh, six one-to-ones, three with him and three with me. Okay. And he's a, he's a doctor of psychology and, or, and that side as well so yeah okay. interesting and I've got a new therapist coming on as a member next week with us Lara from Malmesbury so she's more down your neck of the woods yeah, yeah so yeah. Re she's got a really good client base that could be your client base I, I yeah. could see a lot of similarities there so great opportunities for you to work together there so I'm going to come to you next Lara thank you Suzanne for sharing so I'm going to come to you now, Lara. What have you picked up from this evening that you're going to put into action? 
Um, a, a great refresher. Thank you. Um, it was really good to think about, so Suzanne's talking about like going to Tesco's or what have you and having a stall. And I totally get that from when I did, did the Phoenix cards. But really, if I just up level that to, for instance, nationwide headquarters in Swindon, that they can then afford my fee. Does that make sense? It's the yeah. professional setting. So um, I think it's just keeping an eye out for when those types of opportunities open up because they they used to do that an awful lot, didn't they, Nationwide, have people yeah. in. Um, but I don't think that's all open yet. So it's keeping an eye out for that. Can I just come in quickly for a minute, Lara? I've just remembered I used to go to a meeting that one of the banks ran and it was a business meeting on a morning and it was all um, banks, um, everything. And that was in Swindon. I'll try and find you who it was that ran it. Sorry, I, mm -hmm. I, I'll forget yeah. otherwise. Yeah, no, that, that's brilliant. Because actually I do want that professional lookout because of Aspire, because of the public speaking, because of helping people with their networking pitch. And I mustn't forget that that is a huge, um, you know, I've got a call with a lady tomorrow. People want that help as we go back into the room about helping them with their, 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 their presence. So it does fall under my banner, the Unlock Your Hidden Confidence banner. And I do want to get that, that trademarked because like Beth was saying, she works you know, with life coaches. I'm not a life coach, but the Unlock Your Hidden Confidence banner, whether that's in business, speaking in public, the color and style, the personal presence, it's all, it's all relevant. And so with that in mind, any of these connections are, are fantastic, but it also reminded me, and I'd forgotten this, that I did a talk coming up for three years ago at the Swindon Psychotherapy Center for the therapists of which then four therapists then came to me and booked and I now subsequently have some of their clients that come. So that is perhaps another avenue that I need to pursue. So the person there that uh, I networked with and that came from was the lady that owned the, the group. So I guess I'm looking for connections there to owners who perhaps have a practice where they then rent the room um does that make sense it's not just the one individual therapist I almost want to get the umbrella where I can then go and talk so I guess I'm looking for speaking opportunities to large groups of professional people professional women um because that actually is a they are people who can anybody who can put me into that field of working with professional people as a stakeholder like Beth with a group of financial advisors for instance or um, if, if they're uh, uh, entrepreneurs or people in banks that need training, that, that that's that's an open door for me. So, yeah, so that was really good. And of course, the other one that popped in my head was places like um, enterprise hubs. Like you say, go and have a day. You know, they they hop, they de share the desks. It's just about getting yourself known. But of course, at the moment, I think that's all just starting to come back on board, isn't it? Meeting meeting people in person and, and doing that that type of thing. So. What yeah. about banks? Because, you know, sure. banks have professional people who want to look the part. Yeah, um, I think they have to be the city type bank. I don't think the likes of the high streets anymore are interested. Okay. And it's interesting when you were talking about going to see the bank manager, what was going through my head was, are you actually going to be able to get an appointment to go through the door? You're more likely to speak to that person going to the same net, strategically putting yourself at their networking group that yes. they go to. I don't think I don't think the days of making an appointment or to go and see them, I think they're they're long gone. I think it's got to be done through that social social route. And as we open up, I think it's it is it's getting back to that, those face to face because we can we got our charisma. We've got our our power of the first impression, which we don't have by sending an email or mm. popping up on a Zoom screen. Cheryl, where, where is it Bernadette worked? Works? Uh, M.O.D. Yeah because she got me a talk there on yeah. um, uh, for ooh, uh, International Women's Day, well paid. Um, oh, I'd love that. <laughs> well, Bernadette's the person. Who's Bernadette and, then? Well, She's Cheryl knows her very well. Here. I'll, put, I'll send you her details for you to get in touch. Okay, cool. Uh, she used to work for the something Women's Network, wasn't it, within the MOD. So, yeah, 
So what have I learned this evening? I've learned there's a lot of people that have almost like fallen off the edge since COVID. Yeah? <laughs> I've learned that um, I should have done more telephoning in particular and uh, let people know that you, I care and I'm out there for them. I know I should be spent uh, a lot more time keeping closer to the venues I hired because they just forget and people move on from their jobs and they don't, haven't got a clue who you are. And uh, yeah, there's, there's just a lot to do when it comes to really looking at your stakeholders and getting super close to them. And, you know, I just don't know how organizations, as, as Lara was saying, are gonna be opening their doors to us in the future. So when it comes to things like blogging and and uh, getting our social media whirring again. I just think we've got to get our heads around blogging in particular so that we can, for example, you know, do some amazing blogs and get organizations at the level we want to work with sharing our blogs. Like, so say for example, the Institute of Leadership and Management, Lara, they'd love, a, you know, a blog on, and that's the first thing they would say if, they, if, if they're going to open the doors to you, send us a blog on what it is that you do, and they feed it within whatever feeds they've got going out. Um, so again, Lara, you know, there's the, your catch, your stakeholders really sit within the Institute of Leadership and Management somewhere, because these are people who are heading up organisations. But Perhaps it starts with a blog as opposed to, you know, being there in front of people because perhaps those opportunities will be a while down the line to come on board. I think COVID has changed networking beyond anything we thought it would ever change. But in some ways, we've got to, what I know we all want to step back into, you know, relationship building. But I think as well, we've got to learn a lot more techniques including blogging, keeping up with our social media. So yeah, I've learned lots this evening. As you say, you know, it's just reviewing a topic we're all familiar with, but the world's changed. So some yeah. of these techniques are going to change. And, and interesting, Shara, I heard last week at Athena that they're not, they're not planning to go back to the lunches. They're actually continuing with the online format. So that's wow. quite incredible, isn't it? Yeah, quite incredible. And uh, are people getting that amount of business that they used to online compared to face to face? I think they are because they're so hot on making people have the, you know, encouraging the one to ones and, and referring within the network. And they've got a sort of pass plus system going on. In fact, I because my membership's just about to come up and I wasn't going to renew. I was going to concentrate on the, the PSA one. But then I did, did the talk and then Debbie's pretty much asked me to go and visit. And I thought, well, actually, I maybe she's done that strategically because my membership is coming up. I don't, I don't know, but, but I thought, right, well, actually, if I am going to continue for another year and actually it has been very good. It's brought people to my Wednesday night group. It's introduced me to people on the podcast. I need to make sure I make use of the benefits of the organization. And I think that's something else that we forget. We forget the benefits of these associations that we are our members of, and we don't use them to their full advantage. Um, so I need to, do that you know if, does that make sense you utilize where that meant that you know that membership um, mm. so yeah so thinking about next week is there a topic in particular that people you know feel they would like a review on or some training on what's what's on people's agendas could i quickly ask you you know what you're struggling with playing with questioning blogging have people got their heads around blogging yeah no i'm i'm okay um i think hmm, i don't know and there's nothing that pops into my head if anything mine's more about planning for ne next year and um being very clear on where i'm spending my time okay so could that be a topic where you spend the time is where you spend the money, or where you spend the money is where you spend the time. Yeah. Um, I think I think I think it is. I think it is. You know, reviewed because it's it's we are evolving, and we have evolved since six months ago, and we've evolved since a year ago, and our needs are different, and you know, directions of our business are different, aren't they? So, 
maybe it is a review i don't know okay so perhaps it could be a business review in light of 2022 Mm. I'm all about planning for 2022 at the moment. That's my main focus. Yeah. So there's another one. Yeah. I mean, I, I did that with my group. Um, was it last week or two weeks ago, my Wednesday night group? I did the looking now. In fact, I did the, the thing, Sherry, you know the thing about we did the, the money into quarters. I actually just, I didn't do the money, but what I did was I split the year actually into another three of four months so that they had a plan to go through to the end of January. So what, what are you what are you doing now? And then you've got November, December, no, October, November, December, and January. Your four months started then. And then those last few weeks, and in fact, that was to be my first one back. And then those first few, last few weeks in September were what were you going to do, the planning to make all that work? And the money was actually a small part. It was about the activity, the activity yeah. that they were doing over the Christmas so that December doesn't come and go because people say, you know, if you know that people are going to say, oh, we're shutting down for two weeks or oh, we've got a Christmas party. If you know that's going to happen, it's what are you going to do to compensate for that? And if you've got a product to take to market for Christmas, it was making sure that that was being dealt with at the end of September, beginning of October to come out. So I'm, I'm all about planning for next year. So perhaps going from confusion to clarity for 2022. Yep. There we are. I think we've got our topic for next week. <laughs> and, uh, so Lara would you like to present on that one so ah, I was so going to say that I was so hoping <laughs> no, no I'm not going to commit to that because you know I'm in an absolute pickle okay. and I'm not coming out of thought no because I can't even promise I'm going to be here <laughs> okay no worries we'll do it and I'm sure you're going to pop online and pop yeah, I'm happy to chip in as we go there through but no I, I I can't take the lead on that I'm not no not, worries I can't no worries. commit because you know okay. that I will plan, want to plan it to perfection. No worries. Oh, we shall do the topic and Lara will support us. Chip in, sure. yes. Chip in, yes. <laughs> But I don't want my face up anywhere. Are you putting my picture up saying no, I'm leaving the No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> no. We know what she's like, don't we, girls? <laughs> anyway, thank you, ladies, for your participation this evening. Good thank luck you. taking forward your stakeholder analysis. And we'll have a look next week at 2022 together uh stay safe and look forward to seeing you same time next week okay thanks bye everyone. now thanks bye. Everyone. Thank bye, -bye. bye 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 bye